Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts back with part 8 of my Hemet trailer build. Oh my gosh, this thing is so big. But uh, in this part I'm going to finish the back end, finish some of the detailing around the tires, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm just super excited about this project, so let's get started. As I get started on uh, part 8 here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this wood decking see the wood decking here on the model. Um, the decking that came with the Camilla trailers, there's two different colors, a light and a dark, so I'm going to mix them up and I'm going to start by cutting the pieces for here on each side <clears throat> and then I'll probably do two and two as I go across here. So I'm going to cut all these to length, approximate length. What I'll do is I'll, I'll line them all up on this end. They'll stick out a little bit extra here and I can sand them sand them uh, correctly uh, once that's done. So we'll get all this put in and then I'll go to work on the back. So I mixed up some epoxy the same 20 minute epoxy I've been using. I've sanded the deck to rough it up and then what I've done is I've numbered these pieces after test fitting them so that they would go right in. So I'm just going to continue on. Coat this whole thing. This epoxy doesn't dry very fast. I'll finish laying these on and we'll come back and look at it. I've got all the wood pieces laid in here. So now I'm going to lay a sheet of wax paper over the top, pile some books on it, and let it dry overnight. So there's the deck after uh, a couple days of drying with a sheet of wax paper and a stack of books on it. So I'm going to take my mouth sander. <laughs> Do some sanding, and I'm going to be have my vacuum running while I'm doing that, so I'm not going to film it. But I'm going to basically cut this down, sand off this front edge, and then we'll start working on the aft portion here. So I did some sanding with the uh, with the palm sander and got it reasonably smooth. I don't want it to be a coffee table; it is a trailer, but uh, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to use this. Uh, permagrit sander to do the edge. I like this because there's a, a lip on it. So I can lay it right on top of those and sand this edge smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I trimmed up this edge. Throw a little mahogany stain on here. I know it's, it's not really time for it, but I just can't resist. You kind of know what I'm talking about, don't you? You just want to see what it's going to look like. We'll see what it does to the colors. I'll probably wind up sanding it a little more, but I can just restain it again. I'm not going to worry about the edges or anything. This is not a final coat. This is just to see what I got here. Oops, looks like I'm going to need to do some cleanup on my workbench.
Well, not a final coat, but I think that looks pretty good. The uh, different colors of wood show up in there pretty good. Well, now I'm going to turn my attention to the, uh, the back end of the trailer. The back of the trailer has got an interesting mix of a combination of diamond plate, low spots, high spots, um, all the way across. It's wider than this piece of metal I used. And then I've got to get some kind of an edge on here so I can duplicate this framework. So, I thought about using a sheet of aluminum, but then I've got some of this really nice uh, fiberglass sheet. It's pressed fiberglass. So I'm going to cut a piece of this and then use my aluminum edging kind of like that to uh, do the sides. So I'm going to cut out a few pieces of this and see what it looks like. It'll bolt right to the right to the aluminum deck. Here's my piece of uh, fiberglass. My aluminum parts will will mount like that. They clear the tires just fine. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another piece, another layer that is equal to the height of this and then surface it with the diamond plate. Do the same thing back here. I'm going to go ahead and bolt this down temporarily just to hold everything in place while I, I cut these sides. I just put a couple of bolts in here to hold this piece of glass down and mocked up these sides by bolting them on. Got a piece of glass cut here for the back, which I will do the same thing, bolt it down and then make the side pieces. So now I've got to just cut the these sides to match the tires like this. So I'll go ahead and cut those and then uh, bolt this down more permanently. What I'm going to do for the, the top deck is this piece here is the same height as the aluminum. So I'll cut a strip here that'll be this wide and then surface that with the diamond plate. Then we'll drop down to the, the next level and I'll cut this piece of glass. And same thing on this side. So we'll have the diamond plate, a dip, a smooth plate in the middle and I'll mount a bolt through this back part for my tire mount. So I got some uh, some bandsaw work to do. I'm going to do that right now and we'll see what we uh, come up with. I cut out the pieces for the top. So here's the center piece, the left hand piece, and the right hand piece. They don't sit flat right now because I've got some bolts in there. But that makes a smooth surface here for the diamond plate. That's my raised center part and the same thing here. Got this back piece cut. The tire sitting here. The diamond plate will continue down. And I'll build the parts for this. But I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuck together. Um, I'll have six bolts that will hold this entire deck on. And uh, that should make it pretty solid. There's the finished plate. I cut these sides down so they're not as tall. Um, I glued everything together, but it's also going to bolt on. So I countersunk the screws. So now I just got to bolt this on and then I'll work around the back. And then I'll make the side pieces that would be the equivalent of these pieces right here. I countersuck a couple screws here and bolted them down. This is all bolted down. So now I'm going to surface it and then I'll work on these uh, little edge pieces here. I'm going to use my same diamond plate. And I'll make a couple of strips here and then a strip for around the back. 
cut those out with a pair of tin snips. There's a piece of uh, the aluminum I cut with these tin snips right here. And that will go right here. This piece here in the middle is smooth. And then this across the back is diamond plate. Well, it's not very pretty here, but you can see I've got all my pieces. Um, these pieces, as I think I mentioned earlier, lip over the end. So they'll go like this. Um, these will section together here. There's no, unfortunately, that diamond plate, there wasn't a big enough piece to do it without sectioning, but the tire's going to sit here. It's all going to be painted which should make it pretty much invisible. So I'm going to use the same method I used to, uh, to bond it to the front, which is the thin epoxy. I'll paint it on here. I'll clamp these down um, overnight. I'll lay a piece of plywood on top of them to prevent uh, warping, and then clamp them down with clamps. So uh, that's going to take a little while, and uh, I'll have to let it dry till tomorrow, but that's, uh, that's looking pretty good. Well, this has been drying for a couple days. Pull the clamps off and see what we got here. Well, that's uh. Turned out pretty good. The uh, these are covered with with a clear film to protect them, so that'll get rid of the lettering. I'm going to go ahead and sand this center section and trim up the edges here, and I'll work on the side pieces. I cut some fiberglass parts for the the drop down. And I've marked this edge here with a center punch. So I'm going to go ahead and drill and use some of these little bolts and nuts to bolt these two plates on. I cut a piece of channel for back here. I'll go like that. And I'm going to drill down through the top and bolt it on. I can think of no other way to mount it, but it'll help hold everything together too. So that's the next piece to install bolted that channel in. It's nice and solid. The final piece is this. I cut a little piece of fiberglass and it'll bolt underneath here. And that gives me my wheel cutouts. So I'll bolt that on. Well, I've got the uh, the pieces on here bolted on. These are bolted on. Everything is real solid. Um, I'm going to clean these up with some uh, acetone. I've got to wet sand this a little bit. And I'll put some primer on it. But before I do, there's a pretty good kind of a gap here on both sides. And I'm going to fill that. And I'm going to show you the way I do that. Then I'll sand it, clean this up, and throw some primer on it. So I may have shown this before, but I'm going to mix up some 5-minute epoxy. and uh, make some phlox. And phlox dries just hard as a rock and it's really strong. I discovered it when I was building an airplane. Yes, an airplane that I flew in. Uh, that was a long time ago. But basically it takes some five minute epoxy. I'll take this phlox material and what it is is it's shredded cotton. It's basically like shredded t-shirts. And I just mix it up here. 
and it ain't pretty, but it's okay. Until it, you can put as much in as you want till you get the consistency you want. It sands pretty well. This stuff adds to the bulk of the material. Just pull some more in there. It sticks to everything. Okay, well that's about the consistency I want. And it dries really fast, of course, with 5-minute epoxy. So what I'm going to do then is just take some of this material and I'll just put it in this gap. And I'll work it in. Kind of squish it on in there. make for a real nice looking edge when it's done. Okay, I'm going to do the other side and let it dry. I pulled off my clamps, kind of cleaned everything up with a little bit of alcohol. You can see I've got my, my plates mounted. These sides plates are mounted and I used the flocks to fill in that. I drilled holes for the marker lights. So I'm going to spray a little primer on this just so you can see the detail better. Put the tires and wheels on, put the neck back on, I'll take some uh, pictures of it and we'll see uh, how it's looking so far. Well, you can see I sprayed a little primer on it. I wasn't really trying to uh, finish prime it or anything like that. I just sprayed some primer on so I could see what it looked like. I think you can see the, the way the tires and the back end turned out and the side detailing here, it looks pretty good. Um, I think that really completes the main final assembly. <clears throat> when I come back on the next part, I'm going to finish it, so I'll be doing uh, painting and weathering, and some final assembly, little steps, the tail lights, that type of thing. Um, it might be a couple of weeks before I get back to it. I've got some other projects, but the trailer is massive. I mean, it's, it's, it's massive. My arm is it's hard to describe how big it is. I'll see if I can do a little flying shot of it with the camera here. Okay, I'm not super good with the camera off the tripod, but I really want to show this. So you can kind of see how it looks all together. Oh my gosh, this thing is just huge. My workbench is eight feet long, and it takes it takes most of the bench. I can hardly wait to to get on it. Detail my Hemet. Look up lights and sound. Kind of do the whole project. So anyway, uh, that's going to end this part. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I, I, I love all the nice feedback. And uh, yes, I will get back to this pretty soon. I've got a Tamiya dump truck I've got to finish right now. And uh, a couple other projects for customers. But uh, so far this trailer is looking really, really good. I'm quite pleased with it. So thanks again for watching.